Matthew, Mark, John, Peter, James, met Christ. And they all insisted that Christ claimed to be God. Repeatedly in the Quran, it is stated, Jesus is not God. He's a good prophet, but he's not God. Repeatedly in the New Testament, it stated, Jesus is God in human form. Now I have a decision to make. Who am I going to trust? A man who lived 500 years after the fact? Or people who lived during the life of Christ, met him and talked with him? I'm a Muslim, uh, yep. but what we learned about Jesus, peace yep. be upon him, is that we love him. Yes. We love all the prophets, Moses, Abraham, and we adore them and we follow them. Yep. We learn in the Bible that Jesus used to fall on his face in prayer, and we do that five times a day. Beautiful. We learn that Jesus worshiped the one true God, and that's who we follow. So my question is that as a Muslim who loves and adores and follows the teachings of Jesus, will I be punished or go to hell if I don't follow your idea of what Jesus was or what he taught according to Christianity. If Muhammad spoke the truth, I'm going to hell because I'm a blasphemer. I'm worshiping Jesus as God. So if Muhammad spoke the truth, I am going to hell. If Jesus spoke the truth, that he's God in human form who bled and died on a cross to forgive me and to give me eternal life, if Jesus spoke the truth, I'm going to heaven because my faith is in him. Why would I choose to trust Jesus instead of Muhammad? Because although I have a great deal of respect for Muhammad, like one of the five pillars, give alms to the poor, I obviously respect that. I obviously respect the way Muhammad believed that Jesus was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, ascended to heaven, is coming back a second time. I agree with all of that. Muhammad made a crucial mistake. He denied the deity of Christ. Now, when was Muhammad born? 570 AD, which means he obviously never met Christ. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, excuse me, Matthew, Mark, John, Peter, James met Christ. And they all insisted that Christ claimed to be God. Repeatedly in the Quran, it is stated, Jesus is not God. He's a good prophet, but he's not God. Repeatedly in the New Testament, it stated, Jesus is God in human form. Now I have a decision to make. Who am I going to trust? A man who lived 500 years after the fact? Or people who lived during the life of Christ, met him and talked with him? Sir, when it comes to historical knowledge, that's a no-brainer for me. I will always try and go back and connect with the eyewitnesses to be my primary source of information about any historical person. If you think I'm going to trust the guys who flew planes into the U.S. Trade, World Trade Center to be my primary source of information about Muhammad, you're nuts. I think that's bigotry. To find out about Muhammad, I better have the intellectual honesty to read the Quran. And if I use some terrorists as a reason to reject Muhammad, I'm a narrow-minded bigot. So, if you're seriously considering Islam, you better read the Quran. And all I'm doing is standing here saying, if you're really interested about Jesus Christ, you owe it to yourself to read the Gospels, the eyewitness accounts of Jesus, and ask yourself, does the evidence point to him being reliable or not? Does that make sense? It does. So, I, first of all, I respect you a lot for telling people to read the Quran. I 100% agree. Yep. I used to be a Christian and I finished the Bible. I read it myself. Yep. I had issues with the deity of Christ itself after reading the Bible because yep. you said that who do we trust? Muhammad, peace be upon him, or Jesus, peace be upon him? I said that Muhammad, first of all, did not author the Quran. He was a messenger of the words of God. The Quran claims to be the infallible word of God itself. Whereas the Bible was written by humans themselves as Gospels according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Whereas the Quran claims to be the Word of God itself transferred through prophets and as an oral tradition. The Quran isn't even a book. Okay. The Quran is an oral tradition. My friend here has memorized the whole thing cover to cover. Okay. Because it's an oral tradition, not a okay. book. Fair enough. So the reason why we give preference to the Quran over the Bible yeah. is because first of all, 
It's preserved in its original language. That's Arabic. Less Arabic. Yeah. Whereas Jesus spoke Aramaic. He did yeah. not speak Greek. He did not speak Hebrew. He spoke Aramaic. So we are learning about Jesus in a language that he didn't even speak, first of all. And also, when you read the Bible, you see multiple verses where Jesus says, when someone came up to him and said, Oh, good teacher. He said, Why do you call me good? Only the Father is good. In another passage, he says, no, He says, Only God is good. Only God is good. Right. But why would he create the distinction between him not being good, but saying God is good? Because the guy said, Good teacher. Teacher. So he was his teacher at the time. No, 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 no. And Jesus says, Right there, time out. If you're simply going to acknowledge I'm a teacher, don't give me this gibberish that I'm good. Because nobody's good except God. But Jesus obviously claimed to be good. He obviously claimed to be God. But the guy was not acknowledging it. He was denying it. Good teacher. That's why. I understand that's your interpretation. But there's other passages in where he says, Do not worship me. Worship the one who sent me. He said the Father is where greater than I. Where did he say I. that? He does never says, Don't worship me. He says, The Father is greater than I. Yes. Everything I do is through the will of the Father. Why yes. create that distinction between him and the Father if he's claiming equivalency with the Father himself? Because he humbled himself, limited himself, and passed down the birth canal of a woman named Mary, and he was a human being who was not omnipresent. He lived in Palestine, and he never visited Austin, Texas, or the Big Apple, or Saudi Arabia. So he obviously limited himself as the omnipresent God. He limits himself, becomes a human being, and yeah, the Father's greater than I. Everything I do is through the power of the Father. Nothing I do is of my own action. So why would he say that if he's not God himself, if he doesn't have the power to do all these things, then why would he call himself God? The answer that we have is he doesn't. He calls himself a prophet, a messenger of God. And what he teaches, I believe. What he okay, said, I Okay, fine. Believe. But don't you understand? If you stand there and say the Quran is the word of God, and I stand here and say the New Testament's the word of God, that's going to get us nowhere. It's not true. Because you we cannot show the Quran's the word of God can, the same way I cannot can. show that the New Testament's the word of God. We absolutely can. No, you cannot. Yes, we can. You cannot show that any book is the word of God. It's impossible. Are you historic? Like familiar with the process of mass transmission, right? How do we know anything happened in the history of the world? How do we know the Roman Empire existed? It's because everyone says the Roman Empire existed. It's called mass transmission. If hundreds of thousands of people are agreeing on the same thing. It is taken as fact historically, as a historical principle. So hundreds of thousands of people believe the Quran's a word of God, and hundreds of thousands of people believe the Bible's a word of God. So what does that tell you? It tells us what that, that yes, we believe the Injil, the gospel that was given to Jesus Christ, is the word of God. However, we don't believe it was preserved properly, and the Bible we have today is not the Bible that was given to Jesus because he spoke Aramaic, and the Bible, the oldest Bible we have now, is written in Greek. It cannot be the same, it's impossible. However, the Quran given to Muhammad, peace be upon him, is in Arabic. It's memorized in Arabic. He's memorized the whole thing in Arabic. Can I have a good for him. Good for him. I have a chain of narration connecting the Quran I have memorized good. with the Quran Muhammad revealed in that. Guys, book. I'm sorry, you're not listening to me. We're not making any headway, okay? Have a great day. Okay. They should have told everyone about little Asia, what, what their prophet did to her. Oh yeah. I just think that's kind yeah. of a relevant thing if you want to follow. What would have happened if I would have pointed out Muhammad's sex habits? We'd have had a major explosion out here. Yeah. I've done that too many times. <laughs> if you really want to bear down and bore into the Quran, the Hadith, and Muhammad's lifestyle, especially the way Muhammad treated women, my, your Muslim friends are going to go nuts. Why did the Romans push emperor worship? That was the way to unify the Roman Empire. So you Christians, you either acknowledge Caesar as Lord and live, or else hold on to this ridiculous idea that Jesus is Lord and we will throw you to the lions. 360,000 were thrown to the lions. Why? Because they lived sexually pure lives? No. Because they went to church on Sunday or Saturday? No. Because they stuck to the deity of Christ. All you got to do is study history. Those first, second, third century followers of Christ held tightly to the deity of Christ. That's why they died. They didn't die because they loved their enemies. They didn't die because they fed the hungry. They didn't die because they said, don't live a sexually perverted life. They died because they believed that Jesus is Lord, 
which means Caesar is not Lord, which means we are not going to bow to Caesar as a way to unify the Roman Empire. We worship Jesus Christ. They died for it. So therefore, to try and make an argument that, oh, no, 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 Jesus never claimed to be God, and the first and second, third century Christians didn't believe that Jesus was God. <laughs> it's absurd, guys. Maybe they were wrong. Maybe Jesus wasn't God. But let's get one thing clear. They believed it, and they claimed that Jesus said it. And to deny that, <laughs> that's tragic. He claimed to be God, friends. Which means he's either lying through his teeth, or he's speaking the truth. Yes, sir. I think a lot of reasons why people can't wrap their head around that Jesus is God is because of the differentiating between the Father and the Son. So I just wanted you guys to explain like the Holy Trinity and how that relationship plays into the idea of Christianity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One substance, but three essences. One substance, asusia is the Greek word, three different essences. That's why you can have Jesus talking about how this is my father, father saying this is my son, and yet Jesus also claiming to be God himself. So the, the lack of clarity oftentimes comes with how in the world do you deal with something like the Trinity though? You know, three in one, again the essence and the substance. But that makes a lot of sense if we buy into the concept of the most important thing in this world is love. We came from love and we're going to love. Well, how do you get love? Three in one. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit loving each other throughout time. You get any other monotheistic religion, it's one person. You have one person, that's self-love. That's pride. I don't know how to have a relationship because I'm one God. So the beauty of Christianity is one substance, three essences, that's the personhood. They retain their personhood. It's God has sent the Son to this earth to save us, but it was also the Son freely accepting the call to die on the cross. It wasn't just the Father saying, you are going to the cross. And, you know, when atheists say crassly that God loves a barbecue on the, we on the weekend and just sent his son to grill him on a barbecue. Okay, first of all, the theology is completely off. Secondly, the pain had a, it had a little bit longer than just a, a, couple, you know, a short weekend. Right. It was a little bit more extensive than that. It was a physical pain as well as the spiritual weight of everybody's sin. So thinking about, okay, Let's just look at a transcendental level, cosmic level. Where do we get the concept of love? Why do we want it so badly? And why do we want it to last forever? And the Trinity makes sense of that. Okay, the reason I like your question so much is because of how many people say, unless you can scientifically verify God, God doesn't exist. What's the mistake of that? The mistake with that is thinking the only way to ascertain truth is through science. And God doesn't have any limits. Okay, good. What do you say? Okay, unless I can see it, taste it, touch it, it's not real. I can't see, taste, touch God, so God's not real. Do you see what that's doing? Limiting, yep. And it's denying that he's spirit. God is not a body, like my have a body, like you have one. Right. Do you see why it's so intellectually dishonest to say, if I can't prove God scientifically, God's not real? It's a wrong category. It's like saying, if you can't tell me the color of the note C, you're an idiot. No, 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 I'm the idiot. Because the note C is a different category than color. And if you demand that I tell you what the color of the note C is, I'm mixing up my categories. Same thing with God. God is not a physical being who you either verify through science or you falsify through science because you cannot observe God physically right, right. okay now Trinity one God three persons well that's hard Cliff yeah it's hard why because I think in terms of one in one two in two three and three I do not think in terms of three in one but guess what God has got to be bigger than my rational boxes he cannot be contradictory but he's got to be bigger so, think about space in your dorm room. One space, three dimensions, height, length, and width. 
you take one of those dimensions away and you no longer have space. The walls come down together. You're pancake on a pancake. All right, so one space made up of three dimensions, height, length, and width. So one God, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Have I explained the Trinity to you? No. But I've used an analogy that hopefully opens us up to understanding that this is not gibberish. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. But if morality is not relative, what is it? Where do we get it? And if faith is enough for us, if faith is enough for us to be saved, for us to be saved, for Jesus to die for our sins, where is the morality? Where is the justice of one person doing injustice to another? Where is this just system if someone else is dying for our sins? How does that morally add up? Where is the moral equivalent? You bet. Because in order to have morality, you've got to have a mind. So if there is no God, there's no mind prior to the human mind, which means obviously it's the human mind that creates right and wrong, which means I'm not more correct than you are. You're not more correct than I am. It's all relative. Why shouldn't I pay? Good. And according to Christ, you do pay. Or you accept Christ's payment when he died on a cross for what you did wrong, for what I did wrong. How is that fair to Christ? How is it Isn't fair God to Christ? Towards all? Pardon? Isn't God just towards all? Is God, I'm sorry? Just towards all. Yes, God is just. That's his character. His character is just. When I sin against you, what I'm saying is you don't have value. I can use you. I can lie to you. I can cheat you. I can steal from you. And that's a statement. You're not very valuable. So when I do that kind of thing to you, not only am I devaluing you, denigrating you, but I'm also devaluing God and saying, you didn't do a good job when you made this guy. But you're still avoiding the question that I am I not demeaning God by saying that he had to die for my sins? Can no. he forgive me and have his mercy on his own? No, the reason you're not demeaning God is because God chose to be just, consistently just, as you pointed out. But then the question is, how does he forgive? Is forgiveness simply excusing wrong? Is forgiveness overlooking wrong? Is forgiveness acting like, oh, but boys will be boys, Nazis will be Nazis, Hamas will be Hamas, Israel will be Israel. It's all relative. Forgiveness is God's mercy. Well, how does God forgive? God forgives because God can see what's in our hearts. When we stand in front of God and seek forgiveness, God knows how genuine we are. God knows whether or not we intend to go back to that. That's the basis of God's forgiveness. That if you stand in front of God and you're asking God alone, and you're accepting him, and you're seeking that forgiveness, God can see inside your heart. And you may go back to that sin, but God saw what was in your heart, and he chose to forgive you. Whether or not he chooses to forgive you, he knows your sincerity. Because God doesn't need anyone pain. God's mercy is enough. God understands me, he knows me. He's closer to me than anyone else can in terms of understanding. Okay, then, but how do you know the mind of God? How do you know that God says what you just said? Because God gave me a book with that information. What's the book? The Quran. The Quran. Okay, why do you trust the Quran to tell you the truth about God? Because the Quran is factual in many places. If it's an ambiguous a few places, then I believe that. Because I, be I see the authenticity of the Quran. You can't show me two different versions and say these are both from God. I only see one version. When I see ten different versions, I question it. coming from God? How do we have ten versions? Did God write this or did the uh, believers of God write this? Did they change it? But when I only see one version, and I can show you the change of authenticity, then I believe in it. Uh-huh. Come on, you're smart enough to have he heard about Zaid bin Thabit. You know very, very well why there's one version of the Quran, I hope. Okay? Right. You know what Uthman did, Caliph Uthman did. What did he do? He destroyed all the forms of the Quran that disagreed with the one that he chose through Zaid bin Thabit. How are you going to prove that? Well, it's a historical fact to study history. You know very well that the third caliph, Caliph Uthman, had all the different Qurans that weren't identical gathered together, and he said, Zaid ben Thubet, Thabit, you are the one to decide what is the real thing, because you're the best source of information. Fine. You can come with the That's fine. Have. I don't have a problem with that. But I got a real intellectual problem with you. Well, I'm sorry. Just study your history. I studied it. You're wrong. <laughs> well, then you haven't studied it closely enough, because Zaid ben Thabit was hired and employed by the third caliph, Uthman, 
to do that. Piled up a lot to bring it into writing, to bring it. It already had been in writing, and there were different forms of it. And Caliph Uthman said, "You go out, and you're going to make the real one, and we're going to destroy the other ones." Who it's a historical it? fact, sir. Don't take it from me. So Study the history. Fact? Pardon? Who defines historical fact? Do you define historical fact? No. The eyewitnesses. Are there eyewitnesses who recorded what really happened? And that really happened. Where are the eyewitnesses? Can I well, obviously, they're all dead now. The same way the eyewitnesses for Jesus Christ are all dead now. You have to take your word for it. No, you don't have to take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. Go out and study it on your own. Do not take my word for it. You'd be an idiot, sir, to take my word for it. Don't do it, okay? Just be open-minded and honest and study this history. There are over 5,700 Greek manuscripts of the Bible, of the New Testament, all right? And there are variants. And you'd better learn textual criticism when it comes to reading the New Testament. And you better realize, wow, the fact that we have over 5,700 manuscripts, that's pretty impressive. Now, we start comparing them. And we find the variants, the discrepancies, and then we say, okay, now we're going to study the text and we're going to begin to figure out what is the evidence for the most reliable. And that's how you do textual criticism. How is it morally okay for someone else to be dying for my sins? Why can't God forgive me on the own? God why can we, forgive you. God can God forgive you. But God has chosen to be just, to be the judge, and the penalty for sin is death. Someone's got to pay the death penalty for my sin. Why? Why? Because God has said, when I devalue you by cheating you, lying to you, stealing from you, that is really wrong. And the consequence of my doing that to you is I deserve death. Now, either I'm going to pay that death penalty or the judge is going to take my place. And that's what Christ claimed to be doing, to be the judge, God, taking my place, giving his life for me. God is that bloodthirsty. I don't think that's a God I want to believe in. Then don't believe in him. But let's be real honest. You have made a gigantic faith leap, not based on evidence, based on a blind commitment that the Quran is the word of God. Not only that, in order to understand that word of God, that miracle accurately, you've got to speak Arabic. You know why that is? You tell me why. I'd love to hear that explanation. When you preserve the original language, no one can change the meaning through translation. Yeah. I, I figure out the meaning myself. Yeah. Isn't it tragic that those of us who cannot speak Arabic are not able to understand God's clearest revelation? How tragic is that? There are many English How biased is that? Jesus Christ is not for one nation. Where's the center of Islam? It's the same place it's been since the 600s. Where's the center of Christianity? Started in Jerusalem, went up to Antioch, went down to Egypt, went up to Eastern Europe, then Western Europe, then the United States. Where is the center of Christianity today? Rome. Where? Rome. No. The Vatican. No. The vast majority of followers of Christ live in China, Asia, Africa, South America. You see, faith in Christ is not for one race. Faith in Christ is not for one language. Faith in Christ is for the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ is not for one race, one language, or one people group. He is for the world, and he loves every single one of us. They said the Quran got lost and then Uthman bin Affan of the Allah and that he actually like choose the one he actually like agree with. That's actually a wrong statement. Uthman bin Affan gathered many Sahaba and they actually that live with Prophet Muhammad that they actually this is the exact word of the and Quran. Change of and, uh, sorry. And the Arabic language and the Quran is actually to preserve wa uh, uh, the word of God. And he actually gave it to Prophet Muhammad who is actually Arabic. So I'm going to speak and don't say like uh, uh, Christianity is for everyone in Islam like it's for one nation. This is like gaslighting statement, you know. I did not say that. I, You're misquoting me. I, 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 you just said I never said, said you sir. You just said, no, wait, wait, sorry, sorry. Let me continue. Let me continue. You're getting like pissed and angry. I'm, I'm a, I love all religion. I don't really care. I love all, all people. Religion, you know, 
I'm a Muslim, but I don't really go all Muslim. I'm not, you know, I will think I'm not perfect Muslim too, you know? And I'm not a I'm perfect not... Christian. Yeah, here's the thing. But I know Islam doesn't really like specific for one nation, one Arabic, one like speaking I language. never said that. You got to listen again. What? what I said was, you guys like in order, right in order to you grasp the biggest miracle. Fine, I will. In order to grasp, then let me correct my miscommunication. In order to grasp the miracle of Islam, which is the Quran. The miracle of Christianity is not the Bible. The miracle of Christianity is Jesus Christ. Yeah. But in Islam, in order to grasp the miracle, which is the Quran, the book, the holy book, in its purity, you have to speak Arabic. Yes, you that? do. Wait, you ask, know me, that's me, false. Why is that? Why? 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 Because the understanding... So it can reserve in the God language that he attended to Prophet Muhammad, who was Arabic speaking. Can't change it through translation. So, so no. So, Quran is translated <laughs> to every language in this world with the meaning of the word. Don't like guys like people here doesn't know what's going on with like you're saying like Quran is not only for one language and only for certain people. We came from different backgrounds. We came from different Good. languages. And look at us. Great. You know? Yeah. You, you just said no. You said like people for me who speak Arabic. I, I'm from like very Arabic speaking country. And you just said like Islam is only for me. No, no, I, I did I, not I, I, say that. I, 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 you misquoted me again. Yeah. Let me say it a wait, tenth time. Wait, wait. The miracle of Islam we'll is not yeah. Muhammad. The miracle of Islam is the Quran. Yeah. And in order to understand and grasp the greatest miracle of Islam, which is the Quran, you have to speak Arabic. That's all I'm saying. First of all, wait, wait. First of all, if this is debate, you have to let me finish speaking. And you, you gotta let you, me finish speaking. It's gotta go both ways. Okay. You okay, go. You got the floor. Go. I have Muslim friends from South of, uh, South America. I have Muslim friends from Europe. I so do Muslim... I. Okay. You just said, yeah. This is you. You agree with your point. You said Christianity everywhere. Islam is for one nation, one language. No, I did not. That is not what I said. He said the center is in one area and it's remained it's, predominantly it in one yes, area. Yes, I did. I certainly did. One nation. That's not centric. He wouldn't say that. Like a journalism, then I would say journalism is only for Christianity. You know. It's no, not, no, it's not the point no. he was and making. He said, he said, he said it's, it moved to. No. Can, can I say it's no? I've never Chicago heard him make that point. It's moved to Europe. Islam, just like that. It's, it's centered from Mecca, then it's like way. No, way Mecca is still the center. Trust me, he didn't mean that. If he said it, he truly said I've never heard him say He's, that. I've known him for 35 yeah, years. This is, this is art of gaslighting. You are really expert at. If you want a true debate, I can see. I have a class right now, but don't gaslight people about wrong thing. Don't say like Islam is for na one nation, one one language. This is like sure, I already, I already clarified I that. Listen. I am sorry if I said that Islam is for one nation. Keep I apologize. Me. Keep I don't me. think I did. You're cutting me. You, you keep, keep cutting me off. No, you're accusing him. Of wait, course he's going to respond. Wait, you're accusing him I'm for making that kind of statement. I'm not getting best over thing. I don't care about like I do care like about my religion definitely. But I don't care like about other religion. Like I, there is nothing wrong in my. I only know what's right or wrong for me only. Like, I don't yeah. force people to do something else. You know. But in the same way, I don't like to be. You know, I don't say like, yeah, you know, in Christianity actually like don't I don't like other people. Christianity did really really bad stuff in the 80s like back days like 800 something like in Europe and Middle East like they did uh, most like unsuccessful stuff and they keep doing. I don't lie about this stuff. You know, what I. Tell about truth, tell about truth about my religion, myself only. Don't guys like people to something wrong that you actually not right about. Do you want to convert us? No, I'm not saying, I'm you not don't? saying, I'm not You don't want to convert us? You don't want to convert us? No. No. You don't no. want me to become no, no, no. Muslim? Honestly, I really don't care. I really don't care. Well, I do I care. Why? You guys not loving us. You. I have many You're going to love us by wanting religion. to convert us. I have, I only care about myself at the end of the day. That's sad. I you, I'm not perfect Muslim. Quran right? says there's I, one way to heaven. No, because I know one way. Can I say one thing? And this, this should, like, this is actually, like, this, this is, I don't like to participate in religion debates and everything. Well, then why because are you doing in, this? In the end of the day, because you would guys liking people about my religion. You would say. I like think you're just being very he sensitive. Me a over question. sensitive. I'm answering him. No, I don't. I don't like to debate because at the end of the day, every individual human being responds for their own choice for all. That's right. right. Yeah. Don't That's say, right. Don't say something wrong that you are different to wrong religion. No. No, you will never see me that, and you will never see me lying. Yeah, about but you other contradicted religion. me, and I respect your right to contradict me. Yeah. It's a university environment where we believe in the free exchange of different ideas, and that is good. And we respect each other in spite of the fact that we disagree. I respect her, 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 him, whoever. And I respect you two guys. Okay, um, let, all right? Let me just say one thing. You said yes. two things, actually. First yeah. of all, you asked if we want to convert you. The truth is, all we want to do is put our version of the message in front of you. And then God says in the Quran, there's no compulsion in religion. So all we do 
We put the message across. We leave it up to you. Number two, I really appreciate what you said earlier because you proved my point. You said that the miracle of Christianity is Jesus and that the miracle of Islam is the Quran. Right. And that's a wonderful statement. And I couldn't love it more. Right? You know why that Good. is? Because Jesus was, according to your beliefs, in front of you at a certain point in time. You believe he was there in a human form in a certain point of time. And that miracle was there. And that proof was there. And he had all the reasons to believe. But I can prove to you that the preserved Quran is still in front of us. So my miracle is still there for me to prove people. Your miracle isn't standing in front of me, but I could pull out a Quran and show it to you. Totally and unconvincing. That's my objective morality. That's not convincing at all. That's your problem, but that's what I'll leave you No, that's with. your Thank problem, you. man. I don't, Any not Muslim's problem. In a circular debate, but it was nice talking to you. Good, Good to talk good with you. Good, good, good to meet you. Good to Thank talk you, with you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, excuse me? Yes. Good to okay, good talk with you. Remember that. Yeah. And remember, don't get like people wrong about something that you know. Don't spread misinformation. I'm not spreading any misinformation. If you, believe, look, if you believe Christianity is true, and this is your right to you know, believe it's true, you don't have to lie about other religions. I'm not lying about any other religion. You just did. You just no, did. I did not. Thank you. Yes, cancer awareness. Good, cancer Good. awareness. Excellent. Spread information, not misinformation. Well, go and study it yourself. Don't take I told you guys, don't take it from me. Go and study Zaid bin Thabit and how the third caliph, Caliph Uthman, hired Zaid bin Thabit to get all to gather the Qurans of the different uh, had different vocabulary, different words, and he said, Okay, we want to put together the true Quran. And Zaid bin Thabit did that. Study that for yourself under the third caliph Uthman. So that's why there's such continuity with all the Qurans in the world. Because all the other ones that disagreed were destroyed. They were destroyed. I'd like to invite you to Grace Community Church, located at 365 Lukeswood Road in New Canaan, Connecticut. Our services are at 9.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. on Sundays. Hope you can join us.